Hello and welcome to a housing ideas and tips video with Purple Rosa. In this video I'm going to go into more detail on this Hagrid's hut that I built and put together myself. I modelled this build after the Hagrid's hut that you see in the Prisoner of Azkaban movie. This build took some time to get right. I am really happy with how it came out and I did add my own touches to it as you don't see a lot of Hagrid's hut in the movies like his bedroom. So I had to make up a lot of this bedroom myself but from the movies we do know that Hagrid has cages for animals here but because I liked where these drawers were I left them there and put more animal cages on this side. So on the outside here to get this grass effect all through this hidden glade that I've put here for the Hagrid's heart, I've used the hedges and I've put them upside down. These hedge overgrown longs are from the Eleanor Home Goods Furniture vendor. I had to put them upside down as the top side of these didn't give the overall coverage I wanted for the grass look. The only problem with the hedges upside down is you can't really walk on them as you can see. You have to jump on them and you are kind of floating on them. But it does not bother me as this main walkway here is where you walk up to the hut here. So for this dirt like footpath here I've used the rocks sintered cluster as the bottom of them is nice and flat as you can see and to make the dirt effect under the grass here and in the pumpkin patch I used the boulder basalt slabs which are also from the clockwork city home goods furniture vendor. I chose to use these rocks because as you can see they're uneven and bumpy which works well for the effect I was going for with this pumpkin patch and under the grass area I've put around. I do know there's other rocks that have flat bottoms but I didn't want a total flat surface of these and these rocks are perfect because of that uneven ground effect that they give. So with this I wanted to make it like a hidden type glade which you'd walk up into and kind of like you're teleported into it kind of type effect. So I did that with the archway and for the effect there I've used the skulls here which these are an achievement furniture item. I've got four of them to make that effect and I've hidden this actual skull part in the archway here and I've also used two of the Buyers of the Wilder King which is also an achievement furniture item which I've put one under the ground there and the other one on that side. So for this hidden glade I placed the orcish gazebos down first and then I did the tree layer all around here just to make the hidden glade and because you could see through the trees here I used the cold harbour rocks just to close this in because I didn't want you to see the outside here and because these rocks are nice and dark it gives a nice effect to hide the bluish of the outside here and because you don't see the outside it doesn't really matter how ugly it looks as you mainly want the inside here. 
cities, Cold Harbour rocks come with this Cold Harbour surreal estate when you get it or you can also purchase these rocks from the Cold Harbour home goods furniture vendor. So yeah I've put all those rocks on the outside of these trees all the way around to close this in which makes it more like a hidden type glade. So all the little details outside this house I added in because it is shown in the movie. I had to improvise and do it my way as Elder Scrolls is a bit limited with furniture items but I made it work and it fits well and I've used crates, baskets, some urns here and cages. So for this pumpkin patch I've used quite a bit of pumpkins to make it. It did take a while as I had to place each individually. So for this I've used quite a few different pumpkins. I've used pumpkin sickly and pumpkin frail. Both of these were from the Halloween event and then I've used some pumpkins some sugar pumpkins and also the winter squash which kind of look like pumpkins. I've used more of these winter squashes than the pumpkins because the winter squashes are bigger. So the winter squash, the pumpkins and the sugar pumpkins are all craftable in the game. So I've used quite a few of these all placed individually here especially with this stack here which I'm really happy with how this came out. It did take time as it was hard to place them on top of each other but it was worth it as it came out pretty good. To fill in the gaps between the pumpkins and because pumpkin leaves are pretty big I've used the plant cluster spade leaf. These are from the Merkmeyer home goods furniture vendor. So I've put a few of these in just to fill the gaps between the pumpkins and to make it look more like a pumpkin patch. For this scarecrow here I used the one that came with the witches festival and the crows flying around it are part of the furniture item as you can see and I just put the pumpkin head on it which also came with that furniture pack as in the movie Hagrid's scarecrow had a pumpkin head on it like that so I just added that there to make it more like the movie. So for the actual Hagrid's heart here I used the orcish gazebos just two of them to make this hut as they are nice and big and were the first thing that came to my mind to use with this Hagrid's hut as they have a roof which I didn't have to worry about putting together myself. All I had to worry about was putting in the walls. So for the walls of this house I've used the Merkmeyer wall stone and I had to put these on the side to fit between each of the pillars with this gazebo but it works well. The only thing on the outside here is because these walls have that bit there. On the outside here you do notice that but on the inside with how these gazebos are you don't see it on the inside which is how I want it. So if that does not bother you on the outside here, it encloses the inside really well. 
and makes a nice hut and cabin. So for the doorway of this house, I've used the Orkish brazier pillars, which I've put upside down. Got one on this side and one on this side. And as Hagrid is a half giant, I had to make the doorway bigger than normal and also a bigger door. So for the top here, I've used the statue square bases, two of them to make the kind of roof slash overhang, which looks pretty good. And also works well on the inside here. And to make it seem more realistic with the overhang up here, I've used the rough blocks on this side here, which works well. For the actual doorway, I've used two paintings, which I had to put back to back here. These do make great big doors. And for the door handle here, I've used the Dwarven Gear tiered as they kind of look like a door handle. So I had to use two on each side. And yeah, it works well with this doorway and door design which I put together. And on this side, I've done the same. I've just left the door closed, which goes to Hagrid's bedroom. Also with Hagrid's hut, it's like stilted off the ground. Can't really see it with the grass here or through these walls. But before I put these walls up, I had actual blocks there, as you can see, just to make it like stilted off the ground. So for the inside of Hagrid's hut, the floor of the gazebo is actually stone and Hagrid's hut has wood floors. I've used the Orkish platform blocks as the floors for in here and in here as well. And I've also used the Orkish platforms for this wood part here, which in the movies Hagrid uses to hang some metal things up, but I just put an axe, a hammer and the tongs up there. And on top of it, I just put some containers and stuff just to make it more cluttered. So for the interior of this, I've just added cages on the top here as Hagrid's hut does have cages all up on the roof. So for Hagrid's chair, I wasn't originally sure how I was going to do his chair, but when I was looking at different furniture items, I saw these dark elf pillows, which are nice and big, and Hagrid's chair is a reddish brown colour, so I thought these are perfect to use. I've used quite a few of them, I think about 14. So I've got three on this side, three on this side. I had to add an extra one in between those just to make it more full. And I put one there, I've got two there which you would sit on. And as the back of the chair I had to use the two here and three at the back just to make it more padded and enclosed because as you can see here it pads it out more as if I remove that back one it just looks too thin and unrealistic and I wanted it to look realistic so that's how I did Hagrid's chair and I just added an extra cushion there to make it more cozy. And I wasn't originally going to have a dragon type pet in here, but when I was looking through the pets, I saw the 
Cliff Strider and I'm like that sort of looks like a baby dragon so I put Norbert on Hagrid's chair for these cabinets here for this I had to use a number of things I've used the Orcus cabinet branded just two of them on the bottom here and because Hagrid is a half giant if I had just used these Nord Hutch rough as you can see my character is taller than this so that would not do and to make it realistic and close to that movie I had to put these Nord Hutches hiding the actual drawers in these orcish cabinets here and yes that's how I came up with that idea and the wood effect on these does match kind of so it looks good and yeah just added clutter around on these shelves this build was really fun to do because of all the clutter and that I had around as my previous builds have been kind of clean and neat in this one I could just let go and make it messy and place stuff uneven and for this container here I've actually used the Eleanor Urn Bronze I was looking for a good sized container that I could just stick on here and I saw this and I'm like that could work well as you can hide the urn part in the cabinet here and it could be like a container that you put stuff in uh, for this chopping board it's actually the common book rest practical which I have put upside down as you can hide the book rest part in the cabinet here and just have it a bit off and just looks like a chopping board so onto the fireplace this fireplace is different from other fireplaces that I've done previously as it is bigger than previous designs that I've done and I've also made it look a bit different with the bottom stone here sticking out a bit which you can put things on so I've continued with using the statue square base where you put the fire as the dip in the middle here is perfect for a fireplace and using more of these rough block stone slabs all the way around on the top and the sides here the top I had to put three because didn't quite reach over and yes I've made this fireplace look nice and homey putting some of the orcish shelf longs on the top there and just putting pots and pans and other items on them and for the grate here I've just used the scavenge grating narrow which is from the Clockwork City home goods furniture vendor just to close that in a bit and where the pots are put to cook stuff in the fire for that I've used two things I've used the common post sign holder upside down because where I had it here with this bit here it fits well to put this post here which is the common post flagpole which you'd be able to easily remove and place uh, your pots on to put over the fire to cook your food for the chimney of this fireplace I've used the Orkish brazier pillar again you can see the actual brazier part here but I think it fits with this overall 
fireplace design it makes it look a bit more fancy so on the outside of this fireplace you can kind of see the smoke coming out of it for that I've used the red guard sensors hanging horn using four of them I've just placed them apart just so you can get that smoke effect I could have used the new life bonfire but if I had I've had that here the smoke effect of that would just come inside which I didn't want and I'd have to place it higher to get that smoke effect and I did try that and it stuck out of the pillar that I used so I just stuck with using these sensors and to me it the sensors work better as you can see that light smoke effect that coming out of the chimney there and on the table here I just put some cups on plates and if you're an avid Harry Potter fan like I am you'll know that Hagrid loves making rock cakes so I've kind of done that here with the rough bread morsel which you can get from a home goods vendor so I've just put them there and they look like Hagrid's rock cakes so in Hagrid's bedroom I actually had to make up most of this room as you don't really see the bedroom itself but I think I've done it justice if you notice in my tour video of this house you might have seen Hagrid's umbrella that I put together which kind of looks like an umbrella kind of doesn't so for this I've used the common post flagpole which is what you would hold the umbrella with and for the actual umbrella frills I've used the Khajiit banner hooked I think I've used about four of them yes four of them to kind of make that umbrella look as this furniture item is not as thick as other banners so I had to use those to make the umbrella and it kind of achieves that purpose and Hagrid's crossbow I've also kind of achieved here which again kind of looks like a crossbow but kind of doesn't but it achieves its purpose so for that I've used the Dwarven Centurion Hammer this was a luxury vendor item a while ago so I've used that as Hagrid's crossbow for the rope here where you put the bolts to fire I've used the carcass fresh pheasant just for the rope here the pheasant is actually hidden under the bed so you don't see it and that's kind of Hagrid's crossbow right there and yes I've just added cages a laundry line as Hagrid would have to dry his laundry and yeah just some cabinets there as I said before I just had to make up most of this room but it came out pretty well and I've kept with the clutter around I had to add Fang of course his trusty pet and this dog here kind of looks like Fang and I put him on the bed because in the Prisoner of Azkaban when Harry, Ron and Hermione visit Hagrid in that scene you see Fang is on Hagrid's bed and there's an unknown creature here so I just put this one here as it kind of looks like that creature also in the movie Hagrid has some worm thing in an egg near the doorway here so I've kind of achieved that here by using the Kwama Queen egg and a Nynx Hound which I've put inside the egg 
and just showing its head and kind of looks like that worm thing that's in the egg in the movie and that's how I did Hagrid's hut I had a lot of fun putting this house together as I got to try new things and come up with different ideas and tricks to do and if there's something that I may have missed talking about and discussing in this particular build just ask in the comments below and I will answer that as soon as I can. So I hope each of these ideas that I came up with will help you in your houses or builds. So as always I will see you around. Thanks for watching.